Maybe they're gonna kill Bill this time. Maybe. Yeah. We don't I know. mean, one does not simply kill Bill. And she's just a silhouette, which I really think is interesting because um, it shows you how the director of, photo uh, director of photography, um, which is Robert Richardson, who also worked with Tarantino on The Hateful Eight, which I think is Tarantino's best film, ladies and gentlemen. That's my controversial opinion. Um, yeah, <laughs> what the fuck was that? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's because of the thumbs up. Yeah, hold on. Let me try again. Oh, yeah. Oh, there yeah, we are. Of the okay. up. That's pretty cool. <laughs> hey, Rob, Robert Richardson deserves fireworks for all the Tarantino movies he's done. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, uh, of course, um, after that, we have the, uh, the flashback is done, ladies and gentlemen, which means that our heroine has the, uh, the power of anime flashback to guide her. Which of course gives her a lot of powers. Go ahead. Not Adam. to mention, and I'm just I'm just looking at this now. I swear to God, that's Mr. Blonde's razor that she pulled out of her boot. Maybe actually, now that you mention it, that literally I, just popped be. into my that literally just popped into my head. And there are so many references to like Tarantino movies of the past and ironically future in this movie that I just mm -hmm. kept staring at the entire time. But like that one, just not even ten seconds ago, I'm like. Is that Mr. Blonde's razor? Possibly. I, I actually think it is. I think it might be for sure. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, really there's there's almost be. it's almost guaranteed with Tarantino. <laughs> I could watch this forever. I really could. Who do you yeah, think enjoyed this fight scene more? Because Uma Thurman and Daryl Hannah hated each other. Oh really? I didn't know that. I didn't know. Yeah. Um, it was reportedly they instructed hotel and cinema staff to ensure they're kept apart during the press tour for Volume One, um, and they also appeared in separate areas at the Cannes Film Festival, uh, so the after-show parties wouldn't uh, clash. And when they won the best fight in the 2005 MTV Awards, only Daryl Hannah attended. Oh wow. Hmm. Oh. That would explain why they only have two scenes out of like this two-part movie. Well, it's interesting because they're kind of uh, shown as the uh, the nemesis. Well, they're ne ne nemesi. Nemesi. Yeah, the nemesi. They're kind of shown. Yeah, because um, I, yeah, that's kind of weird. Uh, they probably enjoyed it both. <laughs> Daryl Hannah maybe a bit more than Uma Thurman because. She, she did manage to give her a beating, but Daryl Hannah like clearly loved this part. She oh, chewed yeah. the scenery. It's fantastic. she threw like yeah, she threw the most energy into this mm -hmm. entire scene. And I mean, with only showing like one eye, she uh, yeah. pulls off a hell of a lot. And what I just love about this fight is that for one, what I complained about in volume one stream about how the editing was constantly like quick cutting and the camera work wasn't as steady as it could have been this one is a hell of a lot more relaxed while the choreography is just as fast the fact they're in mm -hmm. a trailer is a lot more claustrophobic and you can tell because l never opens up the fucking sword until after she's like so far away from the bride that she can actually unsheath it in a far enough, in a wide enough space the fact that the bride just is clearly a much better fighter even though she's like clearly tired from walking in the desert because everything she picks and, up and, and being instantly... buried alive with it like well, not even 24 hours ago like that, yeah, that and yet, took a bit out of her and yet her knowledge of like taking anything the lamp the guitar to use as a weapon the fact that l bouncing on bud sounds like a fucking trampoline <laughs> <laughs> like the, um... the sound effects in this are just so amazing and i Every time, like, Elle just does the tiger crane fist and she just gets body slammed into the bathroom wall, it's hmm. it's amazing stuff. I yeah, I it, love... Oh, go ahead. No, I was about to say, which one do you prefer between uh, this and the Vernita Green fight from Volume 1? I actually prefer this one, to be completely honest. I, yeah. I was going to think about it for a second because technically, like, this... Technically, the first one flies by a lot quicker, mm -hmm. but in this one, I feel the rivalry a hell of a lot more. Because, I mean, with Vernita Green, she's at least a little more remorseful and defensive. These two are both on the offense, and they just unleash like hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, the difference is Vernita Green's got a reason to live, whereas Elle's got a reason to kill. Yeah. Or as they say, bitch, you don't have a future. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah! 
so glad you last i'm so glad the last five seconds were in that because that might have been the most brutal part oh yeah oh man uh yeah there's so much to break down in that that scene um sound editing uh sound mixing with the guitar choreography uh, <laughs> I mean, you guys uh, in the chat, you guys can see all of us um, backstage, but Dark Hour and myself could see everyone. Dark Hour and Tyler were just laughing their asses off once they heard the uh, the guitar. Yeah, sound. I, I, re- I, I mean, I, I do my, I do these streams pretty relaxed already, but like when this, when you put up the clips, I have a tendency to like slitch down and just be like, like <laughs> laughing the whole time. I don't know if like the first part of that clip, but I don't know if anyone could see me backstage doing this. I saw. Oh, I saw you. I was. I saw it. Okay, good. <laughs> My legs. How are you doing? My favorite altar. Well, my own. They got some feet in that scene. They got some feet in here. Actually, I'm surprised that uh, Tarantino allowed feet to be damaged. Normally, at the end of the credits, it says no feet were damaged in the making of this movie. For it's like on the other side of the sword, which says. Please tell me you're being serious. I'm not being (laughs) serious. I wish. I wish that was serious. (laughs) That'd be Uh, great. Yeah, I think the uh, the the absolute ferocity, not even intensity, the ferocity of the fight scene is fantastic. It's just people that are there. Um, it's pure battle for survival at this point. And you can see they're just grabbing random objects. The lamp is literally what started the clip off, basically mm-hmm. smashing it on you, then trying to uh, trying to jab you with it and just going all the way with the guitar as well. Uh, thankfully, it wasn't an antique guitar like in the Hateful Eight. So, <laughs> you know what? Something oh. I just noticed about this shot that you still framed here is that the way Bill is spelled is a little weird. I never noticed that it was two capital L's with a lowercase. Oh, I never oh, noticed yeah, it's that. It's always been like that. I think even I mean, no credits. shit. I didn't think you altered the <laughs> fucking image. <laughs> I just never noticed that specifically that it was etched here. Let's that way. let's take a zoom up to my poster. See what it says on there. <laughs> Yeah. Is that exactly how it is in the poster too? No, I'm just fucking around. Okay. <laughs> to my... So you're telling me that all of these women are actual prostitutes. So mm-hmm. do you think Tarantino paid them to be barefoot for the movie or? No, but Harvey I... did. <laughs> <laughs> is that Z laughing in the background? It is, yes. Someone... Okay. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I should probably preface my hateful eight poster literally has like duct tape covering the Weinstein's names. <laughs> <laughs> it was 2017. That was the attitude at the time. Um, he was like, yeah, I got to give it to my Canadian sensibilities. <laughs> I changed oh, for the better. Didn't I? You started, uh, you started hanging around with Americans. That's why we corrupted you. <laughs> Josh is half American. So it wasn't you guys. <laughs> and it mm. just, once again, pisses me off that Weinstein had like little to no faith in audiences having a brain cell. It's it's funny <laughs> that it's funny that in the volume one stream I mentioned how Miyazaki like stood his ground and said no cuts, while I have a Miyazaki poster underneath the Kill Bill poster. <laughs> yeah, it's um. What the fuck? What how the does fuck that is happen? That? How does that? <laughs> yeah, you try going on. Dark Hour, try put two thumbs up. No, two thumbs Say, up. St- no, it doesn't happen to you. Wait, put your hands down and put them back up. Two thumbs up. Yeah, do it like I did. Maybe. Do you yeah. have some settings set up, possibly? Nah, I don't know. Not on purpose. Here, yeah. let's see what... Yeah, there it is. What? Why is it happening for you and not me? <laughs> because Tyler's just cool as fuck, man. That's why. I'm, I'm going to find I'm going to get first, to the bottom of first... this. Uninspired, you're the first person to tell me that. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's my pleasure, man. This was a fun stream. <laughs> oh, yeah. I really had fun. And great to rewatch this film again because, uh, as I said at the start, it's not one I rated higher above the original Kill Bill, but I have grown to love it over time. Mm-hmm. Same. Uh, I've grown to love it in one watching, actually, yeah, because I hadn't watched it in a, in a few years and just see um, how good it is and how well written it is. I just think it's. Um, it, I think I'll watch it more often whenever I watch Volume One, or sometimes I'll just only watch Volume Two. Just... I think it's better showing them both at the same time. If you watch one and then the other within the same week, mm-hmm. you get a better experience on the second film, in my opinion. Mm. Or just say I agree for, with that. Or just say for an entire day off, because I mean that's what I did. <laughs> no, no, no. That's that's seriously what I did. Like the first couple times I saw these movies, it just seemed weird to to just leave one off. It just 
to just leave one for another day it just seemed weird because you know the good thing about part one the good thing about volume one is that it does feel like things are just getting warmed up even though a lot of bloody shit just happened Mm -hmm. yeah it's a chunky movie that's what i like to call it yeah that's that's one way of putting that (laughs) awesome yeah, check out Tyler. He has uh, great stuff on his channel. Really great, really unique. Um, unique. That's what drew me to his video. channel. I loved his editing style so much that he has helped me with pretty much every vi- thing I've done this year. I've done a couple of videos without mm-hmm. him only because I either figured I would be better for that particular one or I didn't want him to see it. But he's helped me with a lot of stuff. I've learned mm-hmm. a lot about editing from him. Great stuff. 